Monty D will now give us a welcome. Please be seated. Good afternoon. And on behalf of the 230 employees at Omega Protein here in Reedville, I would like to welcome you to the 43rd Annual Blessing of the Fleet here at Historic Pleasant Point. There you go. Yes, I agree. <laughs> Many of you probably know that there has been a continuous menhaden reduction operation right here in this area since 1878. And just this year, Omega Protein will celebrate its 100th centennial operating here since its predecessor, Rebuild Oil and Guano, became incorporated in February 1913 right here at this site. Many of you also are well aware of the uh, enormous outside pressures that's been on this industry, and in particular, this very harbor and this plant right here in Reedville. And on behalf of all the employees in our corporate office, uh, we would like to thank you, the community, uh, for your outpouring of support and standing behind this plant and all that it's done, not only for, for this town, but also for this county and this area. And many people ask me quite often, you know, will they, will they drive your way? And I can tell you that there's $7 million investment right there that just showed up this past spring that's proof that they're not gonna drive us away from here. I can assure you that. But again, I thank you all for, for being here today and, and for your support of this industry. Thank you. Thank you, Marty. Welcome to all of you on this very special 43rd Blessing of the Fleet. There is the sea, vast and spacious, teeming with creatures beyond number, living things, both large and small. There the ships go to and fro, and the Leviathan, which you form to frolic there. These all look up to you to give them their food at the proper time. When you give it to them, they gather it up. When you open your hand, they are satisfied with good things. Welcome everyone on land and on water from St. Mary's Episcopal Church in Fleeton to the 43rd blessing of the fleet. This ceremony and others like it along the shores and coasts of the world recognize that fishing is both a dangerous and a very important occupation. Many people in this community do this work to provide food, medicine, and other resources for the good of the wider world. Today we sing the praises of our fishermen and ask the Lord's protection of them. We remember our heritage and honor the fishermen and other maritime workers who've been lost to us, but never to the Lord in the past year. We will read scripture and bless the fishermen and pilots, their ships, planes, nets, and aids to navigation. We will pray for abundant harvests, for the enjoyment of those who go upon the waters for recreation, and for the safe return of all. May our worship be joyful and gladden the Lord and the hearts of all who are here. Let us pray. O God of the heights and depths, of the wind and waves, your spirit swept over the face of the waters at creation, and you made us all in your image. You have sent people to see throughout the ages. Your son, Jesus Christ, called his first disciples from a group of humble fishermen. Guide us as we worship today that we may send these people and ships out to fish again with your blessing. We pray our Lord Jesus Christ, the chief fisher of men, to give them and all who go upon the water his love and protection to keep them safe in their work and recreation and bring them back to us with all hands. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Please stand as we sing, shall we gather at the river.
remain standing for the reading of the gospel. Here now a reading from Matthew. As Jesus walked by the Sea of Galilee, he saw two brothers, Simon, who is called Peter, and Andrew, his brother, casting a net into the sea, for they were fishermen. And he said to them, Follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. Immediately they left their nets and followed him. And going on from there, he saw two other brothers, James the son of Zebedee, and John his brother, in the boat with Zebedee their father, mending their nets, and he called them. Immediately they left the boat and their father and followed him. This is the Holy Gospel of the Lord. Let us pray. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who made the sea and gave all that moves therein for our use, bestow your blessing, we beseech you, on the harvest of the waters, that they may be abundant this season. May your hand of protection be with each one working on the sea, and may you grant your grace to them as they acknowledge you as Lord of their lives. Lord, help us to be thankful for all your many blessings, for you are the Lord of the sea, as well as the dry land. We pray this through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. by the Sea of Tiberias, and he revealed himself in this way. Simon Peter, Thomas called the twin, Nathaniel of Cana in Galilee, the sons of Zebedee, and two others of his disciples were together. Simon Peter said to them, I am going fishing. They said to him, we will go with you. They went out and got into the boat, but that night they caught nothing. Just as day was breaking, Jesus stood on the beach, yet the disciples did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to them, children, have you any fish? They answered him, no. He said to them, cast the net on the right side of the boat and you will find some. So they cast it, and now they were not able to haul it in for the quantity of fish. That disciple whom Jesus loved said to Peter, It is the Lord. When Simon Peter heard that it was the Lord, he put on his clothes, for he was stripped for work, and sprang into the sea. But the other disciples came in the boat, dragging the net full of fish, 
for they were not far from the land, but a hundred yards off. When they got out on land, they saw a charcoal fire there with fish lying on it and bread. Jesus said to them, bring some of the fish that you have just caught. So Simon Peter went aboard and hauled the net ashore, full of large fish, a hundred and fifty-three of them. And although there were so many, the net was not torn. O Lord, God of heaven, the great and awesome God, who keeps his covenant of love with those who love him, and obey his commandments. We ask your blessing on these nets that will be used by the Menhaden fleet. Please keep the nets strong for an abundant harvest and keep them intact from the perils of the sea. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. O God above, below, beside, and within, who has set his higher lights, the sun and all the stars, to steer by, and has inspired us to create the lower lights along the shore to guide our vessels into safe water. Protect those who tend these lower lights to keep them burning on station and rhythm, both day and night, for the safe passage of our seafarers, both fishermen and the boaters, and give to all protection from the perils of the sea. Amen. say he did so with most honorably and with great distinction. 
Senator Dishman became chair of the Senate Finance Committee, and in 1999, he became the chairman of the Senate Finance Committee. During his 29 years in the General Assembly, John served in a number of leadership roles within the Virginia Senate. He chaired the Commission on the Future of Higher Education in Virginia, and chaired the Joint Subcommittee on Higher Education Funding Policies. John and his wife, Karen, who is here today, have lived in Reedville for the past 11 years and have a daughter in Florida. I've had the privilege of knowing them many years as I was also in Fredericksburg during those years. So it's a personal privilege to ask you to join me in giving John a great welcome among us. Thank you very much, Charles, and I appreciate it. I call him Charles because I've always done that, and, and, uh, but Reverend Sidna, as, uh, but he's from Kinsale. You know, he's, he's native born on the neck of He, he uh, comes from great roots there, and I'm proud to call Charles Sidna my friend. I appreciate that introduction, and I appreciate the opportunity to be able to chat with you a little bit today. And as we bless the fleet and the Manhattan fleet and the, those who go out and do the bait fishing, I call them snapper rigs. I was taught to call them snapper rigs. I do so. We'll also bless those who do the hauling of passengers. They were here. And we bless them as well that they have safe passages when they're coming to and fro. I think Tangier Island and Smith Island. You know, I suppose this year, above all years, and you heard a little bit of it from Monty when he welcomed us a while ago, a little more blessing than normal could be used this year and bestowed upon this particular industry. Because I don't know of a time uh, since I have been coming to and from Reedville, which is since 1977, that it's needed more than it is before. Let me give you an example. After the legislative session would be over, and I was glad to get out of Richmond, and it's been a cold winter. Every winter I was there seemed to be a cold winter, and it got colder. We'd go to try to go to Florida, and I, there was a thing down there in Lakeland, Florida, called Sun and Fun. It was an airplane flying. I I liked the airplane, so I'd go down there and enjoy myself. And and what you'd end up do is landing out in some South 40, and you'd be transported back to where everything was happening in a van. So I was a part of that. And somebody behind me, and you know how it goes when you have eight or ten people in a confined area, where are you from? Well, I'm from this and I'm from that. And I say, well, I'm from Reedville, Virginia. Somebody said, where is that? I said, well, it's down near the Chesapeake Bay on Cockles Creek. Oh, I know where that is, some voice back there said. Reedville, that's where they steal all the fish out of the bay, that plant down there. Well, I didn't feel like going to say anything then. But I'm afraid I've got a little too much redneck in me to let it pass. So I waited till we exited the van and I asked him how often did he feel that he was compelled to display his ignorance about that issue. And he had no clue what I was talking about. I said, they don't steal anything. They're carefully regulated, and they are not all of the fish in the bay. It's just one species. And before you get to the bycatch, that's all they catch, is the menhaden. He didn't believe me for a minute, and he went on. Well, that's a part of what my message is about. Because it's been going on for over a decade, the pressure on this planet. If you recall, some of you do recall, 25 years ago, 30 years ago, there were two plants. And when I was first given the honor to represent you in the state senate, there were two plants here. One right over here, this American Standard. 
and then there was and then there was Zapotahaney at the time, now Mega. And so the two had probably 20 boats between them. There was a fishery in North Carolina at a boat, but there was one in New Jersey, and they plowed the oceans and the bays from Maine to Florida. Not many off the coast of Florida, but they plowed during their season. And they fished, they used spotter planes, and they fished probably those 20, maybe more than that, boats. And then they started to be booted out, I use for lack of another term, these states. First the Northeast and then down to Delaware. And now, today, the both North Carolina plant is closed. The family did not wish to continue that. And the only reduction plant on the East Coast is behind me, right here. It's the only one. There are half a dozen or so snapper rigs, bait fishermen here, and some out of New Jersey, only a few. And they can fish up there in New Jersey, but off the Virginia waters is limited. So you wonder where the logic is. There are super PACs where people spend thousands of dollars to send dollars to send their propaganda. If you're not aware of that, you're not ready to vote. Because your mailbox three weeks before election is filled with it. Now a super PAC is different from a regular political PAC. I'm going to tell you the difference because it's important. A super PAC cannot advocate for anything. Charles Sidner was running for office and they loved him. They could do nothing more but malign his opponent. They couldn't say one good word about him. And the only thing they can do is be against something. And you've seen that in your mailbox. Every one of you. If you read it, probably stopped after a while. But, but that's what they do, is malign, distort, and they use hyperbole to make their point. There may be a touch of truth, but most of it is, as I said, hyperbole. And that's a shame. That was tested in court and found that it was going to be it was a legal thing to do. No names have to be given. Well, this plant has been subject to that for I know five, six, or seven years. I've gotten the mail. And I've heard about it. I even heard this. I even heard this, and maybe you did too. We've got to stop catching Manhattan because they clean the bay. When the water passes in the mouth of the gills, it cleans the pollutants from the bay. And as soon as I got that, I asked Vims about it. They never heard of this thing. Never heard of this thing. And then you all remember five or six years ago, time flies, that was the demonstration out here by Greenpeace and some of their allies. They didn't know why they were there, they were just instructed to be there. I suppose it, it was the Maryland propaganda from the guy that was in the van with me. They were stealing all the fish out of the bay. Well, ladies and gentlemen, it's a serious thing, and Omega takes it seriously. Believe me, they do. And let me tell you what they did. There was so much external pressure without foundation, without any foundation at all, no scientific proof. They said, okay, we will agree to a reduction. And instead of the 10 boats, I think last year they had nine. But that wasn't good enough. The organizations kept the pressure going, on and on. And of course, I think, and it's my opinion, that a rather gullible and naive ASMFC swallowed it hook, line, and sinker. And now this plan is reduced to seven boats. Now, if any of you are beguiled into thinking that that's the end of it, it's not. They also did a pretty good job of dividing and conquer one of the oldest military tactics in the world. They divided the bait fishermen
from the reduction of vision impairment. And they made allocations and pitted one against the other. An old tactic. And that's a shame. But I will tell you that from now on, the, the reduction industry and the bait industry must come back together. You know the adage, together we stand, divided with all. You've got to be back together and stand firm together. And I mean that sincerely. You've got to be together. Remember, there is not one iota of legitimate scientific proof that this fishery is being overfished. Not one. Not one. And so they're now trying to find a legitimate way of telling ASMFC that, that it is. But they can't do it. It defies logic. You've got seven boats now and the entire Atlantic coast, at least off the three mile limit. And you've got the bay. There's no way, there's no way you're gonna outfish the procreation of many. So ladies and gentlemen, it's a serious day. And when you heard the distinguished members of the clergy talk about blessing the nets and the Manhattan catch, yes, it's going to require that blessing. But it also is going to require, and I ask you to remember, that those who would criticize from afar, it's all external. 99% of it is external who don't care about this plan, don't care about the other 250 jobs. They don't care. Just so they can come to the bay and catch a fish and not have to look in the mirror and blame the one looking back. It's an era of instant gratification, and that's a shame. So ladies and gentlemen, it's a pleasure to be with you today, but it's a very serious matter, and one I hope you'll take to heart. Thank you very much for having me. Our health is in the name of the Lord. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Lord, we assemble here today to give thanks for the men and women who shall go forth this season to use their strength and skills for the benefit of mankind. As they set out with their hearts and souls ready to work, we ask your divine blessing upon them. Bless them with a prayer life full of thanksgiving for every catch that is provided to them. Give them your divine guidance for the direction that should be traveled to make them successful in all their ways. Keep them safe and give them sound judgment. We also pray your blessing upon the families while they are away from one another. Bless them with faith and strength. We pray in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Remember your servants, O Lord, who have crossed the bar in this past year. All who have died in the communion of your church and those whose faith is known to you alone. Gather them in the net of your compassion according to the favor which you bear unto your people. And grant that increasing in knowledge and love of you, they may go from strength to strength in a life of perfect service in your heavenly kingdom. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. O God, whose days are without end and whose mercies cannot be numbered, make us, we beseech you, deeply sensible of the shortness and the uncertainty of life. And let your Holy Spirit lead us in holiness and righteousness all our days, that when we shall have served you in our generation, we may be gathered into your kingdom, having the testimony of a good conscience in the communion of your Holy Church, in the confidence of a certain faith, in the comfort of a reasonable religious and holy hope, in favor with you, our God, and in perfect charity with the world, all of which we ask through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We 
now invite the representatives of American Legion Post 117 to accompany the harbor master to cast the memorial wreath in memory of those lost at sea.